into our greatest yet to be. So this month, we are exploring this idea of curiosity. Thank you. <laughs> I move too much. I don't want to knock it down. <laughs> and we are looking at how curiosity can actually be a superpower. So this is beyond just the curiosity of wonder and looking at things with a childlike curiosity, which is a very vital and important part. But we're going to take this a little bit deeper in order to really turn it into a superpower for our own spiritual growth and development. So I want you to imagine now perhaps a recent memory of the last time you went to a movie theater. You went to the theater, there's the big screen, the lights go down, the music's loud, creates a whole visceral experience to where you are completely engaged in the story that's being told, right? And this environment allows us to kind of forget our own world for a moment and get sucked into the world of whatever the storyteller is bringing to life on the screen in front of us. And not only are we viewing this, but we can feel what the characters are feeling. We are often moved, whether it be a scary movie that makes our heart pound a little faster, or some kind of poignant movie or emotional movie that may bring tears to our eyes. And this can feel very real. And then the lights come up, and all of a sudden you notice, oh, I got my popcorn to clean up, and oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sitting here, you know, with whoever's around me. And, and, and slowly we kind of wake up or begin to integrate back into our surroundings. So life is this. Life is a projection of our own perception, of our own stories. We see life and experience life based on our own lens. We are the storyteller depicting how we choose to experience what is showing up around us. So our own awareness, our own beliefs, our own thoughts and ideas about ourselves and the world is what is reflected in the circumstances or the world around us, most much like that projection of a movie or a film. But the thing is, it's not a fixed reality. Our experience is a moment-to-moment -moment reality that is unfolding before us, and we are the storytellers. And this is where, if we are willing to invite in curiosity, we can move from a fixed mindset to a more fluid, open, curious mindset, which allows us to see things with more nuance or perhaps with a multifaceted perspective. So as we are entering fall, I know there's already the pumpkin spice lattes are back. <laughs> and soon we're going to start seeing the Halloween decorations. My family's already been asking for them and asking for them. I tend to be the one that tries to hold off just a little longer, can we? And so this reminds me of, um, you know, experiencing a haunted house. And there is this house over kind of in our own neighborhood that they construct a whole haunted house in their front yard. And when we first moved here, our daughter was three and three or four, and we were very curious about it, but she in no way was going to go in. Well, this last year, age six, she decided, I'm going to do the haunted house. So we get up to it, you know, and the first thing is like, ah! As you even like go to walk in, there's this character that man, she's, oh, what are you know. So we're like, it's not real. It's not real. I hold her hand and we move through the haunted house by saying, that's not real. <gasps> that's not real. It's not real. <laughs> that's not real. We do pretty good, you know. <laughs> and then what gets me is that like, I, 
I think it's over, right? So I kind of let my guard down and step out. And then there's some kind of like skeleton dog or spider was it, that jumps out at you like, ah, when you least expect it. And that's when I like scream and then she runs and <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I bring this up to share, you know, that, that openness, that willingness to, to ask, to question, to, to notice what are we perceiving and to ask, is it real? Is it true? That curiosity, instead of believing everything we see and believing the stories and the judgments we have about what we see, again, creating that fixed mindset, by opening up a little bit and finding that space, we can begin to have a different experience. So we last week introduced this topic by turning to Brene Brown's definition. And she defines curiosity as interest in a cognitive openness to engaging with a topic or an experience. Curiosity is recognizing a gap in our knowledge about something that interests us and becoming emotionally and cognitively invested in closing that gap through exploration and learning. So I want to personalize this definition a little bit for our topic today. So I rewrote it as this. Curiosity is interest and an openness to engaging with ourselves, our thoughts, and our world. Curiosity is recognizing a gap in our knowledge or understanding about ourselves and the world and becoming emotionally and cognitively invested in closing the gap through exploration and learning. All right, so this is the journey that we are traveling this day and this month. When you hold curiosity in this way, and perhaps if you hold curiosity as a deep core value as I do, it can become more of a lifestyle, providing a path for deep learning and personal growth and expansion. So what it does is it allows us to move from what we know or think we know to be true about ourselves or situation in order to see something that perhaps we didn't know or see before in order to have a deeper understanding of this thing called life, God, the universe, the world, whatever wor word works for you, to have a deeper understanding of ourselves and life. So we can choose to commit to this idea of curiosity as a path for growth and self-awareness, or as our kind of default brain may have us do, uh, and how society kind of uh, supports, we could choose to be committed to being right and to seeing a situation as something that is happening to us as opposed to through us, by us, for us, right? So just notice right now, and not in a place of judging yourself, <laughs> but notice right now, are you more committed to curiosity or to being right? And are you willing to perhaps just move the needle a bit if you're on that far side of being committed to your story of being right, to opening up to a little bit more spaciousness and curiosity? What this does is it creates more spaciousness for us to actually make a conscious choice instead of living by a default reaction. So one of the first steps in doing this work of embracing curiosity is to pay attention and to notice our default reactions. What are those ingrained patterns that come so quickly that we move or respond in such a way that we're not actually consciously choosing our thought? We're just saying it. And then perhaps with a little space, either a little reflection from the other or a little time before bed and whatever it may be that we realize, ooh, I wasn't really coming from my highest and best self in that moment. Something else 
was leading the way. And so just that creates the awareness, the curiosity to explore how we are showing up with each other. A great place to play with this is in our relationships. And we are always bumping up against each other in relationship, whether it be a personal intimate relationship, a relationship, parent, child, family, co-workers, spiritual community, or simply your neighbors or those you happen to be in line with at the grocery store. We are always in relationship. And we can begin to get curious and to notice what is triggering us and how are we responding. And then go a little deeper to see, is our default reaction a sign of some kind of old, limited belief that we can choose more consciously to free ourselves from, to let go of those old patterns in order to create more space and curiosity for something new to emerge. And one of the simplest tools to do this is taking a breath, right? <sighs> if you notice yourself oh, having that moment of reaction or whatever emotional charge, just breathe. And from there, we can listen, we can invite in the infinite wisdom, we can invite in the love from within to actually consciously choose how we want to show up or how we want to respond instead of reacting. Taking responsibility, the ability to respond, means providing that space. That breath, that moment, minding the gap between the, the thought or the reaction and actually saying the thing or actually choosing to indulge that thought until it becomes like a snowball building momentum and then we're telling our story over and over and the snowball gets bigger and bigger and bigger until it becomes this giant snow mountain that seems so real. Of course we would say, there's a snow mountain there. It's real. I can see it, right? But what is that made up of? It's made up of this momentum of thought that keeps attracting to itself because like attracts like, building up our story by sharing with those around us who support our exact point of view until it becomes what seems really true and real. But we can begin to melt away that giant snowball by inviting in curiosity, Spaciousness, breath, questioning, noticing, asking, is it true? Am I willing to see the opposite of my story as true or truer? And what this does is it, it again, it, it opens us up for a new awareness, a new approach, a new perspective on life, to see things differently, to choose a new thought more consciously. So by bringing this type of awareness and curiosity to our life, we can move through the world noticing things and beginning to name them. And in naming them, it creates that space. So let me give you an example of this. If you are you know, in a conversation and someone says something and you notice yourself feeling a little defensive or reactive, and as you continue to do this work, you will be able to, in a second, notice like, oh, mm, it's that wound, that's the trigger, it's that self-doubt, it's that unworthiness that's coming up again. And by simply being able to notice, oh, I'm feeling that doubt, that unworthiness, and wanting to then defend myself by speaking in a certain way. But by simply noticing, what am I feeling right now? Oh, there it is again. And naming it creates a little bit of space to get curious, to notice what thoughts we are having about ourselves, the other person, or the situation in the moment. And then taking that pause can allow a shift 
a transformation, a new possibility, a new relationship dynamic to emerge by simply shifting how you perceive yourself. So something I became aware of a handful of years ago was my default reaction to defend myself in order to really feel seen and understood, right? Like I have this kind of, my like core need and desire is to be seen and understood. And so I would have the strong desire to want to explain why I, why I do the things I do so that the other person would get that, I don't have a bad intention, right? Like, well, this is why I'm doing it. So when somebody would make a simple request, I would go into, oh, but, I mean, I did this because of blah, 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 and the other person is just hearing blah, 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 blah. They're not listening to me. Why are they so defensive? Where is my intention from this kind of, you know, unhealed inner child, you may say, of wanting to be seen and and understood, thinks that it's explaining itself to protect itself by giving all the information so you can know, oh, I'm really not a bad person. I, this is why I'm doing it. Can't you understand? Can't you see why? But the other person, it is perceived as excuses, defense, you know, you're not listening to me, you're selfish, all of these things. And so we can begin to unravel all of this by doing our conscious work, by being committed to curiosity and, and knowing and understanding ourselves even deeper. And so I had an experience, I'll, I'll tell just kind of a very, um, what may seem like very simple example of this. I won't get into the many other personal stories I could share. <laughs> <laughs> my wife's sitting here. I won't, I won't go there, <laughs> but I'll tell a simple example of this moment. So um, I was a, uh, a counselor, like a, a facilitator at a teen camp, and we were doing some kind of exercise outside, and uh, we were standing outside in a row, like having a moment where we would say something to someone across from us and, and reflect something. It was, you know, one of these, like, look into your eyes, spiritual practices. And uh, where I'm standing, the light is shining very much, the sun is shining in my eyes, and I have very sensitive eyes. Here's my story. I need to explain to you why. I chose to wear <laughs> my sunglasses. And so when I go, in, and it's my turn to be in front of the other uh, adult advisor, he asks if I can take my sunglasses off. And for some reason in that moment, it triggered that in me that like, oh, I'm doing something wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm bad because, you know, these things uh, covering my eyes. So I'm not actually fully present to the exercise or, you know, like what, like this, maybe this is how the person is perceiving me, but really it's just my, I, if I take them off, I'm going to be doing this. My, anyway, so it's like all these thoughts in a millisecond, right? But there's kind of a, and, um, you know, I, I kind of chose, I chose, like I took them off. I was like, oh, well, I mean, I'm just, the light's in my eyes, but I kind of reluctantly did it, right? And then I was distracted the rest of the time because I was like, it, something just didn't sit right with me. And then upon reflecting later, I was like, oh, I was feeling like, for some reason, a, a simple request to, would you be willing to take off your sunglasses became this whole thing about me that I had made up in my own mind that I was somehow bad or not doing it right because I had on sunglasses, right? And then when I take a moment now and look back, I was like, okay, so another choice I could have had, I could have simply just said no, <laughs> period. I could have asked to, um, yes, if you could switch places so I'm not looking at the sun, and then right? But instead, I got into the whole, I'm bad, I'm wrong, okay, I'll do it, but now I'm suffering, you know, and then this whole story. <laughs> so, I share this to say, even though it seems like a very simple moment of someone saying, will you take your sunglasses off, there's a whole world in that moment that if we're willing to be conscious, to get curious, to really go deeper moment to moment, these are the opportunities for spiritual growth. 
We may think it is the moments that we are sitting on the mat, meditating, or taking a beautiful walk in the woods. And these moments of interactions that cause us to go, uh, that too is our greatest spiritual growth opportunity. So as we begin to create some space by inviting in curiosity, by noticing our thoughts and then taking that breath, taking that beat to mind the gap, to mind the moment of noticing our thought and then choosing to actually think the thought and it becoming the snowball or the moment between a reaction and actually then pausing and having a conscious response instead of that default reaction, which actually creates even more distance. So if we want to truly experience being seen and known and understood and intimacy and belonging and all of these things, the invitation is to stop looking at others to give us that love, to give us that approval, that we desire and realize, as the reading said from the amazing work of Byron Katie, that love needs nothing. Love is already complete, and that is who we are. So we can return to the awareness of I need nothing outside of me to be whole, perfect, and complete. We can remember the truth of who we are. But first, we must acknowledge that that those triggers are there, or those thoughts and those beliefs, and begin to question them so then we can move through this process of turning them around, of transformation. So there's always a moment when we are willing to just slow down and become a little bit more of the observer in our own life. And noticing the questions we ask. Are we asking, oh, why is this happening to me? Why does this keep happening? And instead, be willing to move into curiosity and to twist that question, turn that question around to a more conscious way of asking, like, is this thought true? Is what I'm thinking about this situation, about me, about the other, is it true? Awareness is key. Identifying those judgments and assumptions that we have about ourselves and others will help us shift and notice when they come up. Because what I have discovered in my own life is that there's not all these random judgments. There's actually a very kind of specific pattern of judgments and things that are very much related to my own core wound that I have decided to walk this journey with to bring more light and awareness and consciousness to, to experience transformation. So there's, there's often a pattern of thoughts or a pattern of judgments that we can begin to deconstruct to have more awareness around. And then once we notice one, we start to see how it shows up. Oh, there it is in that relationship. Or, oh, that's what that was from childhood. Or here it is showing up with this person again. And realize, oh, I'm the common denominator, right? <laughs> As Taylor Swift says, it's me. Hi. I'm the problem, it's me. <laughs> yes. And then to turn it around though, right, and not seeing problem as a, as a judgment, but seeing it as, oh, I have the opportunity then to see things differently, to change my mind, to take back my power and my own agency, to live life curiously, consciously, waking up and aware instead of running by default about what everyone else says or thinks we should or shouldn't do, that then we have believed about ourselves that we should or shouldn't do or be. When we begin to question these judgments, we can see them for what they really are, which is fake news. <laughs> you know, these stories of, oh, poor me, all oh, these birds, you know, they're always hurt, people hurt my feelings and no one ever, you know, believes me or sees me or blah, 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 you know, all of it. That's fake news. 
that's this idea of, of fear and doubt coming up. Some of you may have heard this, uh, I think it's called an acronym, of fear as false evidence appearing real. Are you living in a haunted house in your own mind? Right? Is this real? This isn't real. This isn't real. Ah! Yeah. False evidence appearing real. Hmm. And as we begin to just notice and question, we open up, we create a little bit more space to see from a new perspective and to release our fixed mindset in order to experience peace and freedom and more connection that we desire. So next week, we're going to get a little bit more into the work that Byron Katie is known for, and it's called The Work. And um, so I'm, I'm going to kind of wrap up today without getting too much into that, but it is an amazing practice and some simple questions. So this week, if you're curious and this is ringing true for you, I invite you to... Go to YouTube, Google, whatever resources there may be. Uh, take a look at our lending library, our bookstore. We may have some books on the work or Byron Katie. I'm not sure. But look up Byron Katie and watch some examples of how she uses this process of simply asking, is it true? How do I absolutely know it's true? And what does believing this true say about me or make me feel, right? So if you're curious... Do some pre-homework and get a little related to this work, and we're going to dive into it even more next week as we look at what is actually motivating our behavior and getting curious about that. So I want to leave you with this last tool. Switch it up. So we have a moment to pause, to breathe, to reflect, and now we're going to switch it up. We're going to switch up the energy in order to see something from a new perspective. This quote comes from a book called Movement for Actors by Nicole Potter. The body is constantly acquiring knowledge, expressing feelings, and awakening sensations in the whole body. Our world has become so civilized that we often forget that we inhabit our bodies for only moments on the spectrum of time. If you spend a lot of time sitting with your legs crossed, find a way to hang upside down and pretend to be a bat. <laughs> Switch it up. Switch up your perspective in a fun, playful way in order to break free a little bit from this fixed mindset of how you see the world and perhaps invite in curiosity about how a bat sees the world. So the invitation this week, hang like a bat, crawl like a squirrel, do the crab walk, whatever it may be. But ask, be willing to ask and to listen to what is actually wanting to be known in the moment. To live in a state of curiosity and to remain open to the possibility of experiencing life beyond the haunted house of your mind into experiencing the wildest dreams of your pure imagination and see how that can unfold into not only creating and experiencing your highest and best good and potential, but the highest good for all as we work to create a world that works for everyone. Yes? Yes. yes? All right. Let's take it into prayer. So right now, we take that breath. <sighs> Just sitting in a moment of stillness. Inviting in curiosity spaciousness, openness. Mm -hmm. 
breathing into the pure potentiality of this now moment. As we know and recognize this one life as love, as peace, as wholeness, this one life as pure possibility, knowing that there is only one thing happening, one thing living and breathing each and every one of us in this one divine activity, this cosmic isness, this first cause is love, is peace, is wholeness, is who I am. This is the truth that we have come here to know this day. This is the truth that we are affirming right here, right now. Is it true? Well, is it love? Is it peace? Is it wholeness? Hmm. And we breathe, allowing the energetic vibration of these words of peace, of wholeness, of love, to inform every aspect of our being from the deep cellular level to our energetic body to our spiritual body. Body, mind, heart, soul, spirit is all there is. Love. Love is. So I'm so grateful to know that love is who I am. So grateful to know this truth for myself and to see this truth reflected with every beloved I meet. With every beloved, I have the opportunity to see this truth reflected back to me as love, as peace, as wholeness. For we are all divine expressions of the one walking around in this world in our own unique ways of being and expressing and showing up. But the truth is we are one and love is who we are. So how good it is, yes, how good it is to know this truth, to lean in and to rest in love as love and to let love be. So I release this word now into the action of the law, the law that always says, yes, 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 my beloved, it is done and it is so. So together we say, and so 